Welcome back to Crosstalk. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Woody Allen, uh, somebody sent me this. And by the way, send me your Jewish jokes. I want to hear your Jewish jokes. They're probably funnier than my Jewish jokes. But somebody sent me this uh, from Woody Allen. It says, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve immortality through not dying. <laughs> Everybody's going to die. That's right. Some people have a relationship with God and they're prepared to meet him. Other people have been confronted with who God is, and they have made up their mind who God is not, and their heart is hardened. What do you do as an evangelist with that situation? Right. Again, relying on the truth. If I believe God's word is true, truer than anything else on the face of the earth. It goes, a great example. I mentioned in a previous program that my view as an atheist of the Bible was what a bunch of silly fairy tales, like Noah and the Ark and how it, it is, oh, I could write a better fairy tale than that, I used to think. The truth is, God can do anything He wants in the way He wants it done. And it takes real faith to put the spiritual truth of God above and beyond what we face. Just as an example, there are people who want to say, surely my uncle is not in hell because he was a good person even though he never confessed Jesus or even went to church or even believed in God, he was such a good guy. Surely God has him in heaven. And how do you respond to that? I believe the Bible. I and say, what does the Bible say in reference to and that? The, Bi the Bible says that unless you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall, if you believe, you shall be saved. It also says there will be weep, weeping and gnashing of teeth for those who God does not recognize. And it's really arrogant for someone to say, I'm a good person, he's a good person, she's a good person, they're a good person, because there is none righteous. No, not one. Well, better yet, what we're saying is, my standard is the one that God's going to follow. Yeah. My standard. Okay. Well, most people think that way. Okay, man's standard is one that God's going to follow. God follows his standards. God did, you know, I tell people all the time, God didn't write the Bible by committee. Hey guys, gather around. What do you think I should put in uh, Acts chapter 4? You know, no. He said, this is, here it is. Boom. This is truth. And truth is truth. And there's only one truth. There are other religions that have sliding scale truths. Well, at this level, it's this. At this level, it's that. Look, God's truth is yea and amen. It's one truth. And that's it. If we believe that, then when we're dealing with people who say, I don't care about your God. I don't care about my life. I'm okay the way I am. See, it is the compendence, if that's a word, the, total, the totality of the weight of the Spirit of God, hot coals on their head, falls upon people. But God is gracious to give us a choice. And he said, choose life. Jesus said, it is the Spirit that gives life the flesh profits nothing. That's what I believe, former atheist. I thought I had the world wrapped up, and instead I was the one wrapped up and I couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag because of my ignorance. If we don't tell the truth, how will they know unless someone is sent? In reality, it doesn't matter how bad we are or how not quite so bad we are we deceive ourselves into thinking that we're good enough to satisfy God, and we're simply not. The hard part about understanding the blood, especially for a Jewish person, we don't sacrifice animals anymore. As a matter of fact, they didn't really care that we ever did, most typical Jews. But why can't God just understand me? I used to say, if there is a God, he made me this way. That's his tough luck. <laughs> you know. Well, a lot of Jews think that without using those words. I am who I am. If, there's, if God really loves us, he'll love me the way I am. He does. But it, getting into heaven isn't about how much he loves you. And it's, it seems to be characteristic of some of us that we will judge God based on our understanding of man. We have certain expectations that we've come to anticipate and we're reasonable and we're fair. And our view of fair and reasonable, we sort of paint 
on God. But God has a completely different standard, a different view of right and fair. Witnessing to a man one day who said to me, do you mean to tell me if Adolf Hitler, the moment before he died, would have gotten on his knees and confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior, he'd be in heaven? I said, yes. He said, then I don't want to go there. <laughs> that was his carnal view of what I, I, God should do. I was lecturing at a Christian university in an adult education course on world religions. And there was a rabbi speaking before me. And he made the statement that uh, he was asked a question by one of the adult students, you know, what do Jews believe about heaven and hell? And the rabbi said, well, I, I, Jews don't believe uh, in, in heaven and hell. We believe that we make our own heaven here on earth. And they said, well, I mean, does, does everybody go to heaven? He said, oh, yes, everybody goes to heaven. It just takes some people a little bit longer than others. And that's the reason that we don't say, uh, we don't mourn for more than 11 months. We don't... Uh, uh, sit shiva and so forth for, for there's, a, there's a time period and I was astounded and one of the students had the presence of mind to say well what do you do with Adolf Hitler is he in heaven and the mm -hmm. rabbi said well um, yeah it just maybe took him uh, it just took well, him a little yeah. bit longer and I was so shocked to hear such a silly thing but what shocked me the most was one of the students raised their hand and said uh, uh, asked a, a question uh, to which the rabbi responded with, he answered using the words of Jesus. Hmm. And the student asked him, well, where did you get that? And the rabbi said, well, it's in, you know, it's in your Bible. It's, it's something that Jesus said. And, uh, you know, and he was Jewish. Mm -hmm. And the student said, where did you get that? The rabbi says, it was in your Bible. The student didn't know Jesus was Jewish. Mm. So the rabbi finished up. He didn't know I was the next lecturer because I was dressed in blue jeans and a, a casual shirt. And so I got up to lecture and I stopped the class and I said, look, uh, you know, I'm supposed to speak about uh, Messianic Judaism and... Uh, I said, but I got to ask you a question. Now, this is an adult education class in a Christian university. And I said, uh, uh, how many of you think Jesus is Jewish? And a number of hands went up. And I stopped and I said, okay, how many of you think Jesus is not Jewish? A whole bunch of hands went up. When we get together the next time, I want to talk about the Jewishness of Jesus and what that means for Christians today. Please join us next time because we're going to share some things with you that you probably don't know. Till then, God bless and Shalom. Because He loves me, I will live for Him. Because He loves me, because He loves me. He loves me. I will live for him. Because he loves me, I will follow him. Because he loves me, I will follow him. Because he loves me, because he loves me.